Hello and welcome to practice number 9 of Circuit Lab, Multiple Sources, Special Notation, and Resistor Identification and Marking. My name is Mr. Burleson and you can reach me at geaux15 at hotmail.com. So, last class we talked about how a motor works and how a DC motor has usually two or three windings but two permanent magnets and then they use the commutator and the brushes to alternate the current on the windings on the armature uh, which which is part of the rotor and what that does is is that it changes it from north and south pole so that the motor is both pushing and pulling as it goes around as shown in the uh, diagram to the right the parts of the motor please know what the brush is the, commu the commutator the armature the 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 north and south pole permanent magnets the stators the rotor how the terminals work and it's really important that you understand why they're wired the way they are the other thing to keep in mind is that as you look at the current the current remains the same, it's just that the internal windings, it changes the direction on the internal windings. But let's talk about multiple sources. Sometimes a circuit has more than one source. So, generally speaking, if you want to add two, uh, two sources, if they're voltage sources, they add really well in series. Current sources add really well in parallel. Okay, so if you look below, you can see how V1 and V2 are added together since they're in series. So the equivalent voltage source would be V1 plus V2. And the same thing for the two current sources, I1 and I2. Since they're in parallel, you can add them together. However, you should not put voltage sources in parallel or current sources in series. Because if you do those things it will violate the circuit rules, which means that it's not a valid problem. Also, keep in mind, circuit symbols, we've sort of gone with sort of the standard circuit symbols, but there are hundreds of circuit symbols. So you should have a couple of pages of just nothing but different circuits uh, symbols. Keep in mind, sometimes they also just draw a picture of like if you wanted to have a light bulb, you can either use a light bulb symbol, you can put a box and write light bulb in it, you can put a picture of a light bulb. They use a lot of different things for things like light bulbs. Certain things like open switches and closed switches are very, uh, are very similar, but uh, like the circle with an X is a lamp or a circle with a semicircle in it as shown below is, is also a lamp. Okay, these are very, very common uh, ways to see. The other thing to keep in mind is that anything that's got an arrow through it is like a variable resistor, a variable capacitor, etc. But one of the things to keep in mind is that another common hands on activity is to give you resistors and then have you um, look at the resistors and be able to tell what uh, what they are by their color-coded markings okay generally there are four markings on a resistor a b c d okay so a is the first significant digit of the component b is the second significant digit c is the decimal multiplier and d if it's present it's not always present indicates the tolerance okay now if it's only a three colored uh, resistor what that means is, is that there's no tolerance marking, which means it's plus or minus 20%. Okay. And so you will notice that all resistors that use these color markings are only accurate to two significant digits. Okay. So if you look at the example on the right, on the lower right hand, A is equal to red, B is equal to violet or purple. Okay. And C is equal to green. Okay, so that is 2.7 times 10 to the, or 27 times 10 to the fifth or 2.7 mega ohms. D being gold means it's plus or minus 5%. If, if D was silver, it'd be plus or minus 10%.
So the standard color code, and by the way, this really does need to be in your uh, in your um, uh, binder, is black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white, gold, silver. Now, gold and silver, or none, are always that fourth or that D marking, okay? And it's how accurate is, is it plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 10%, plus or minus 20%. OK, um, you will also find that, generally speaking, um, you know, that if they use the generally speaking, it's going to be gold, silver or none. However, in some cases, they will use one of the other colors like brown or red or green uh, as uh, tolerance markings for very, very high tolerance or very, very low tolerance resistors, okay? Now, many resistors, when you look at a resistor, and if this looks a little bit like the capacitance problems, it, it should, but if you look at the resistance, they're usually defined by the material, the surface area, and the length of the of the material, okay? So R is equal to rho times L divided by A, okay? Where rho is the resistivity of, of the medium. So you'll have very low resistance for conductors like copper, very high resistance for insulators. And then what they'll often use, to they'll use semiconductors, which have sort of medium resistance, uh, for actually making resistors. L is the length and A is the area. So a common use of this formula, which should be in your binder as well, is I will say I have two kilometers of copper wire of a certain gauge. Okay, so the two kilometers is the L. Uh, the certain gauge tells me what the A is because different gauges have different surface areas and Rho is the resistivity, and they'll either give you the resistivity or they'll or they'll expect you to have it in your binder. So just remember resistance increases for longer lengths, um, smaller or thinner wires with less less cross section, higher temperature, and less conductive material. And then if you want to decrease your resistance, shorter lengths, larger area cross section, lower temperature, and more conductive material. So let's think about what are some of the common, the resist, resistivities of common materials. Uh, silver is 1.59 times 10 to the minus eight ohm meters. Holy smokes, that is really, really low. And you'll notice that that is easily, it's very close to copper, but it is much more conductive than aluminum. OK, aluminum is still a good conductor, but aluminum is going to heat up more because it's going to have more resistance. A lot of your semiconductors, you're talking about gallium arsenide, germanium, silicon. OK, those are like 10 to the eighth, 10 to the minus one, 10 to the two uh, when you're when you're looking at uh, the resistivity. So you're talking about anywhere from seven to 16 orders of magnitude more. But then when you get to the insulators, now you're talking 10 to the 17th, 10 to the 21st, 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 25th. So now you're talking about just a ridiculous amount of resistance. Now, there are standard resistor types. And so if you go out and you buy resistors from like Radio Shack online or something like that, there are, there's basically 12 standard resistor types. 10, 12, 15, 18, 22, 27, 33, 39, 47, 56, 68, and 82. Okay, so these are the 12 most common resistors, okay? And they're usually, uh, they're the most common resistors for 10% resistors, okay? They're based upon their tolerance and the geometric progression. And when we get into, like, if I want to make a, 5 ohm resistor out of this, I would take two 10 ohm resistors, put them in parallel. Okay, pretty simple. All right, 
And what you'll find is that it's really easy for you to create any resistance you want using these resistors, okay, in some sort of combination. And that's why they, that's why they pick these types. So here's a 100 kilo ohm resistor, and you'll notice it goes brown, black, yellow, okay? And I look at the fourth band, it's silver, so it is plus or minus 10%, okay? Now, in a class quiz, let's look at the resistor values for the following. Now, you'll notice that some of these, like the ones on the top, row on the left hand side are brown black black and the other one's brown black black so those two actually the resistor amounts should be exactly the same but you'll also notice that also one has a silver one has a gold so they have different tolerances and then the rest of them i think all have silver tolerances um so but you'll notice that even when they use the same colors, if the colors are in different orders, remember it's an order of magnitude problem, so um, they will be different. So, I would like for you to again go to scioli.org, grab another sample test, practice again, give yourself only 40 minutes, okay? Use your binder, use your calculator. Make sure you put your name and team at the top of each page, okay? Tackle the easy problems first, then the tough ones that you know how to tackle, and then the tough ones you have to guess on. And always check your answers if you have time. Make sure that you go through the binder checklist to make sure that your binder has all the materials that you need, that you can easily find them. Do your own binder checks to make sure you can find all the equations and all the materials and all the history and all the ways to solve problems that you need to find. For your homework, continue to work on your binder. Now I want you to do level six combination, level six multi-source and level 10 resistors. Yes, you it will actually go out and it will give you a whole bunch of different resistors. And every time it's a different set of resistors to see if you can um, properly identify the resistors. Thank you so much. And this completes 2.1.